So one of the first questions that I like to ask when I'm sitting down, trying to figure out for this run, what class do I want to play? And maybe I have something specific in mind or, or maybe I want to try something out. But I feel like when exploring the various classes, you need to sit down and look and say, are you going to go through the entire trilogy? Or are you just looking to uh, immediately jump into BG2? Or are you just going to play BG1? Or maybe just through Siege? Because certain classes open up. Certain classes unlock at different times. Um, a great example, and I pushed this up to the archive. And you guys know I love monks. Baldur's Gate, I love playing monks. Pen and paper, AD&D, d and 5.0. I, I love monks. But being honest with you, Baldur's Gate 1, it's a slog. They're, they're kind of ho-hum on there they've got a couple of okay abilities but but essentially you're running around throwing darts and and just kind of a second tier fighter but then they begin to open up in bg2 once you get quivering palm once you get a nice slush fund of hit points you start getting the magic resistances you've got the speed bonuses they become beast mode but are you willing to wait that long are you willing to go through there so i feel like the cavalier highlights this because the cavalier excels during certain encounters um, facing draconic and demonic characters and enemies that are out there which with siege without any spoilers uh, with Baldur's Gate 1.5 or, or whatever we want to call it out there now that opens up a whole classification of enemies and, and I find the cavalier to be really really fun to play because much like the Paladin and the accompanying fighter classes, the warrior classes, you have a big slush fund of hit points. So you can sit there and take some really, really good damage. On top of that, you can access um, essentially any of the weapons in the game, and you can access any of the armors in the game. And if you're playing throughout the entire series, as you get your skill points and your weapon mastery points, you can really spread out. So what you find is the various magic items, you could switch one for a while and do two-handed. Maybe you could go one-handed. You get to explore those different options and those different abilities as you play on there. What's interesting about the Cavalier is that plus three bonus against dragons and demons. That makes a really, really big big difference on there because it stacks on top of everything else so you're going to have your strength bonus you're then going to have your damage bonus you know whether it's a two-handed sword or a long sword you're going to have that you might have some other properties on that magic item on there you know acid fire that's going to stack those dice you might have some damage dealing buffs from the arcane or the divine casters that's going to stack that buff i mean we're getting pretty powerful on there then we're going to stack some potions you're going to stack that buff and then when you really need it against dragons and other encounters on there you're stacking that plus three that is powerful that is very very heroic on there uh, you also get some morale bonuses you get some protection against elements i I find that to be the most curious. I'm not really sure what the class kit was trying to do there. Um, maybe spice it up a little bit. I find those resistances, um, yes, you know, there's always one or two key fights in the game that, that are going to look to exploit lack of certain resistances or, or kind of something your character's lacking, but you can always power through it, and it's minimal. Uh, across the entire saga, just, I mean, you can only get hit with so much on there in terms of elements and those resistances while they're nice uh it's not kind of groundbreaking on there maybe they were just trying to spice up the bonus uh a little bit more but i would recommend this class if you've played through some fighter classes or um if you want to power a game against classic classic D, &D monsters demons and dragons then this is the class for you and evoking those memories or invoking those memories in pen and paper ad and D, I had a fighter lumeric and he was geared up specifically just to fight dragons i had armor i had a two-handed weapon i had some magic javelins to throw on the way in and uh, i went through various adventures with the party and the dm but i was trying to build my rep 
on just fighting dragons. And, and the excitement of that encounter, impressing it upon me with that class, that, that's always carried over into Baldur's Gate. And without any spoilers, uh, you are going to use the Cavalier abilities, the classic knight abilities, lots and lots of times. And you're going to need them when they're on there. That plus three makes a huge, huge difference.